A key gas pipeline in Syria has been blown up, leaving much of the country without power for several hours. The government accused the rebels of sabotage, with the blast reportedly being followed by heavy gunfire. RT's Middle East correspondent Paula Slea has details. Well, we're just hearing from the Russia Today Arabic correspondent in Damascus who says that power has been restored to the country. But this follows a night of panic in which the capital city Damascus was plunged into darkness. There were also huge parts of Aleppo in the north and the west of the country that were in blackout after rebels hit a gas pipeline not far from Damascus that supplies power to the south of the country. By all accounts, this does seem as if it was a well-planned and orchestrated effort that had been in the making for quite some time. There was also a military checkpoint in the west that came under fire. There were casualties there. There was also a church in the town of Dumar that was bombed. This in addition to the two main squares in Damascus. These are the squares of Umayyad and Abbasian, and they were also hit by mortar shells. Now, I visited the town of Yamuk, which is on the front line from where I filed this report. This is Yamuk, South Damascus. Ten months ago, it was home to 1.2 million Palestinians. Today, 10% remain. The price of war is felt acutely here, where it's divided families and pitted brother against brother. They betrayed us. We cannot trust them anymore. Eight days ago, Abu Muri and his wife came home. For 10 long months, they'd lived on the streets not once giving up the hope they'd return. This is what waited them. And the welcome, we are coming to kill you, Bashar, scribbled on their walls. Whatever happens, I will not leave my house again. I would like to destroy the walls and build them again. It could not be worse than this. For one year, Syria's Palestinians managed to stay out of the conflict. But the infiltration of foreign fighters with big dreams and even bigger promises of money forced the residents of Yamuk to choose sides and take up arms against people they'd known their whole lives. I have some friends fighting on the other side. They are not friends anymore. The ones who displaced us from our houses and destroyed our homes are not our friends. Each day, Abu Muri leaves to fight them. But not before he stacked furniture high against the windows to protect his family from snipers. Life inside these bullet-riddled walls is as dangerous as it is outside. His two sons, as vulnerable as their mother every time their father walks out the door. But it's always a painful farewell. Um Muri carefully helps her husband prepare for battle. She knows he needs to go, but each time he leaves behind the same unanswered question. Every day when he says goodbye, I wonder if he will come back or not. Like when he got injured, he didn't come back. I went to find him in hospital. There are a lot of men like him and women like me. But not a lot of fighters have brought their families back to Yamuk. The snipers are in shooting range, and three days earlier shrapnel from a bullet blinded Abu Muri's left eye. But the 33-year-old doesn't have a choice. He has nowhere else to move his family. And while the southern part of Yamuk is still in the hands of the rebels, his home, or what remains of it, has been freed by Palestinians who, like Abu Muri, are fighting alongside the Syrian army. When I go to the battlefield, my mind is always with my family. I hope I will come back safe to them, to take care of them. And I pray that if I get martyred, they will find tender people to look after them. The front line is near, two streets away. But for Abu Muri and his comrades, the battle hits closer to home. Each time they take aim to secure the streets for their families, often it's a neighbor, friend, and sometimes even a brother who is pointing a gun back at them. Paulus Lea RT, Yamuk, Syria.